Fine. Deblina, start the video and we'll start. Okay, sir. So just give me a minute. We are live now on YouTube and with all your permission, we are starting now. A very good evening and a warm welcome to all the doctors present here. I am Debulina from Clarit. We are very much proud to be a part of this webinar as a digital partner. Clarit is India's largest live digital CME and doctors generated medical content platform which is exclusively free for all the medical practitioners. So now I'd like to take a minute to introduce Clonate with all of you. Thank you so much, all the doctors, for your patience. You are all are invited to visit our website, which is www.clonate.com. So now, without further delay, I would like to hand over the session to Dr. Prashant Kariya, sir, to start with the scientific program. Over to you, sir. So thank you. On behalf of AOP Gujarat Secretary Kirit Sisodia, uh, I, Dr. Prashant Kariya, the EB member, welcome one and all to today's session. I request President of AOP Gujarat, Dr. Rakesh Desai, to welcome one and all and give brief introduction regarding the e-Gurukul program. Rakesh Bhai, please. Rakesh bhai, unmute. Hello, hello. A very good evening to all the viewers of on this e platform of PG Clinic of uh, e Gurukul, one of the most prestigious and popular program of AOP Gujarat. On behalf of AOP Gujarat, my president, Dr. Akhil Desai, welcome here. Our teacher of teachers and convener of the program, Dr. Baldev Bhai Prajapati. Project in charge, our past president and the conceptualizer of the program, Dr. Yogesh Pare. Our project coordinators, young and dynamic, Dr. Prashant Karya and Dr. Nehal Patel. Today's mentor, Dr. Deepa Banker. Today's experts, Dr. Kalpana Datta and Dr. Manish Parikh, and our presenter, Dr. Vimal, and all the friends and all the friends to clear net. PG Clinic e Gurukul was started last year by then president, Dr. Yogesh Parikh. And it was a very popular program. It, it's uh, got popularity and we, within no time nationwide. Of course, Dr. Baldevai was the uh, instrumental and uh, he was sure we was there throughout all the sessions of the program. And today also we have, we have got his blessings as our convener of the program. So the, the, in, the in between, I, the, the Gurukul was going doing quite well last year, but in between there was vacation in the Gurukul. But again, now the vacation is over for all the students and now we are revived it again. And now we are start, we, have, so we are going to continue every fortnightly for the rest of the period. Our PG students are really fortunate to learn directly from the teacher of teachers and great experts. I'm sure uh, with, with each, each, each and every session, they will be enriched and they will, they, that will increase their clinical acumen and that will help in their day-to-day -day practice in the, the, all the knowledge. So with this, I hand over to Dr. Prashant for the further proceedings. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, now we will be moving ahead. But with, before that, I just request uh, our project in charge, Dr. Yogesh Bhai, to say a few words and then we'll start. Yogesh Bhai. Uh, thank you, Dr. Prashant. Thank you, Dr. Rakesh Bhai, for the kind words. And... Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Baldevai Prajapati, sir, for this wonderful program uh, last year and uh, this year. And I congratulate Dr. Prashant Karya and Dr. Nehal Patel, madam, and thanks for this uh, uh, coordinating this project this year also. And on popular demand of the uh, Igurukul program, we are restarting after some vacation. And thanks, Dr. Rakesh, by for this uh, restarting of the program. So thank you very much. Without wasting much time, uh, we will continue this program. Over to you, Prashant. Yeah, thank you so much, Yogesh Bhai. So today we will be having a case presentation from Dr. Vimal. Dr. Vimal is a third year resident 
in SVP Medical College, Ahmedabad, and will be presenting a case under the guidance of a Dr. Deepa Ben Bank Banker. She is a mentor, and she was actually my PG teacher also. Uh, she is a professor in SVP uh, Medical College. So we welcome both experts and presenter uh, mentor with us. And to introduce today's experts, I invite Dr. Nehal Patel, ma'am. Thank you, Prashant. So it's my privilege to introduce our uh, experts today. Uh, Dr. Kalpana Datta, madam. She is Professor of Pediatrics and Director at Pediatric Center of Excellence in HIV Care at Medical College, Kolkata. She is President-Elect 2022 in West Bengal Academy of Pediatrics. And she has uh, many other posts in the IAP Central as an EV member, as an is zone coordinator in various chapters. So it's a long list and I cannot complete it. So I thank you, Madam, for joining us and accepting our invitation. Our second expert, Dr. Manish Parak, he, is, uh, he has done a clinical fellowship in child neurology from the University of Toronto Hospital of Sick Children. And uh, he is senior professor in the consultant pediatric neurologist at SN Medical College, Jopur. Welcome, sir. We are uh, really privileged to have both of you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Baldev sir is uh, having some problems with the net, so uh, he will be joining soon. But he said we can go ahead with the case uh, as we have both the experts with us. Thank you so much and we welcome the guest. Can I request Vimal to start the presentation of his case? Dr. Vimal, please. Good evening, everyone. My name is Vimal Mahishwari, third year resident at SVP Hospital, Ahmedabad. My PG guide is Dr. Deepa Banker. She is professor and head of department of Department of Pediatrics. Informant is mother of a six-year-old male child residing at Vatwa, in Dubai religion. Known case of developmental delay since six months of age, came to our hospital with a chief complaint of seizure since two days. Before two days, the mother noticed abnormal movements which were in the form of jerky movements of both upper limb and lower limb associated with uprolling of eyeball, free frothing from mouth with twitching of lips, each lasting for two to three seconds, two to three episodes per day for two days. Mother reported these movements as a new onset symptom. Patient was hospitalized at private hospital for two days for similar complaint and some blood investigations were done and some injectable medications were also given to the patient. Patient was discharged the next day, but as symptoms did not resolve, patient was brought to our hospital. Patient was on regular medication and there was no history of drug defaulting. There is no complaint of fever, cough, cold, difficulty in breathing, excessive crying, frequency of stool, vomiting, lethargy, reduced oral intake, trauma, or recent immunization. I would like to begin from the antenatal history. The mother of this patient had regular antenatal visits and regular ultrasounds and all were informed to be normal. Mother had developed complaint of high blood pressure during the pregnancy for last 15 days along with the complaint of swelling in both the feet and the mother got admitted for elective LSCS. There is no maternal history of drug radiation, fever, rash, leaking TV, bleeding TV, diabetes mellitus or thyroid disorder. Our patient is second order male child born out of non-consanguous marriage to a 35 year old second gravida mother and was full term LSCS delivered due to previous CS being the indication. Birth weight of 3500 gram, not cried immediately after birth, cried after 2 to 3 minutes according to mother but was not admitted in NICU and no documents are available for that. Breastfeeding was initiated within 2 hours where he was kept in hospital with the mother for 3 days. Some injection was given in left thumb and left thigh and some oral drops were given, probably being birth vaccine. At birth, there was no feeding difficulty and patient was discharged with mother after three days. At birth, mother felt the head was small as compared to the face. Till one month of age, there was no any difficulty in feeding and child was taking breastfeeding well. Then patient visited a private practitioner for routine checkup. 
where the mother was informed that the child has small head and was asked for a pediatric neurologist consultation who advised him further neuroimaging a neuroimaging was done which was suggestive of some abnormality in the brain and where the and when counseled for regarding the same condition patient was started on some regular oral medications at 3 months of age mother noticed some difficulty in sucking so breastfeeding was stopped and top feeding with amul taza with 1 gem 1 dilution with water without sugar with cutlery and spoon was started at 4 months of age child was having difficulty in uh, not holding his head at 6 months of age mother noticed there is some difficulty in changing his clothes not able to hold his head there is stiffening in all four limbs and increased irritability in the nature for this they consulted pediatric neurologist and they, he advised to continue physiotherapy and some eye and ear scan were also advised at that time but the relatives didn't get them from 6 months to 4 years of age there was progressive increase in stiffness diaper application became more and more difficult and scissoring was seen in the lower limbs at 4 years of age there was a episode of unusual there was an episode of unusual movements about for 2 to 3 minutes relieved by itself and was not associated from clothing from mouth or uprolling of eyeball or with fever patient was hospitalized for one day some blood investigations were done some injectable medications were given patient was discharged on some oral medications and was advised to continue the same medication to prevent further episodes on discharge the patient was also advised some additional brain investigation which was in form of application of lead on the head which was probably eeg which showed some abnormality in the brain at 5 years of age relatives stopped physiotherapy as they noticed there is no improvement in the child at present patient is on some regular oral medication as prescribed by pediatric neurologist in family history my patient is second order male child born out of non consensual marriage who was 35 year old mother and 36 year old father is no family history of convulsion sudden death congenital defect or mental retardation patient has an elder sister of 8 years but there is no history of similar complaint in sibling a patient belongs to lower socio economic class according to modified kuposnomi classification in immunization history my patient has taken all the vaccines as per national immunization schedule there are no documents available but this is scar is present feeding history at birth there was no feeding difficulty mother noticed first feeding difficulty at 3 months of age so breast feeding was stopped amul shakti with 50% dilution water without sugar was started with cutlery and spoon complementary feeding was started at 6 months of age currently the child is taking milk mashed dal rice khichdi and fruit child is fed by mother in mother in lap via cutlery and spoon child takes roughly about 30 minutes to complete each meal with very little chewing and maximum swallowing with dribbling from both angles of mouth calorie deficit is 59% for the age and protein deficit is 6% developmental history in gross motor the child is not achieved head control fine motor there are no fine motor development like the child speaks by syllable in personal social the child recognizes his mother being responds to her voice and smiles at her mother the patient has never achieved boil bladder control according to relatives there is no sleep disturbance and in vision the child follows object in hearing the child turns his head towards the sound developmental question be 85 and developmental age of this child being less than 3 months suggestive of a global developmental delay sir should i stop or prashant sir yes uh, vimal experts will be asking the questions uh, kalpa ma'am and manish sir you can ask the questions till now on any slides also you can ask the questions sir it is like a pg exam only thank you sir so sure, thank you so much it's not a pg exam i think it's a learning uh, session for all of us but then yes we we appreciate it so uh um, thanks to be right okay so uh, uh you beautifully narrated the history and then at the end of your history of presenting illness what do you think the child may be having 
What's your impression? The time is uh, having a global developmental delay. Okay. Might be due to some antenatal or perinatal insult in the central nervous system. Okay. So you think the child is having global developmental delay? Do you think there is any any other thing which you want to say from your history that was very apparent? The child is also having feeding difficulty. Pardon me. Feeding, feeding difficulty is there. Okay, so there is feeding difficulty. So there's global developmental delay, feeding difficulty, and there was something which you that mentioned, uh, giving uh, you know the other uh, physicians also pointed that out, and some of the relatives also pointed out. What do you think that was? Uh, some problem in the limbs, possibility of spasticity, or okay, so there is scissoring and. Someone commented about the head size. Did they? Yes, sir. Uh, the head size being for possibly microcephaly. Okay. So the child is having global developmental delay. The child is having microcephaly, right? And even when the baby was born, there was a small head size, right? Yes, sir. So uh, the child has progressively developed, so not very stiff when he was born, but then he progressively started developing stiffness, right? Okay, yes, sir. that's it. And he also has uh, feeding difficulties. The everything else seems to be fine, right? Okay. Yes. So, uh, you think that there is something going on, which which uh, what, what do you think is the is the timeline of the development of the problem? So, where do you think is the uh, the, the the problem started to originate? Is it the antenatal period, the natal period, or the postnatal period? Uh, the insult would be antenatal or uh, neonatal perinatal period, but okay. the symptoms have started in the postnatal period at three months of age. Okay, so uh, the, the the baby was not having any problems at birth. No, sir. Oh, so what about except the that his mother head noticed head? some small head, small right. mother noticed small head. Yes. Right. So there was small head size. There were already yes. some something which started at that time, right? Okay. Yes. Sir. And uh, this progressive spasticity. Uh, you also said that the child is having some abnormal movements, and he presented at this point in time, at six years of age, with uh, seizures, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you think the seizures are epileptic or non-epileptic? Seizures are epileptic. Epileptic. And at four months, four years of age, you said there was something going on at four years of age. At four years of age, the child also experienced a similar symptom. It could be epileptic. Okay. So, ma'am, ma uh, Kalpana, madam, if she wants yes, to ask something, and then I'll chip in. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Dr. Rikwes Parik and the Gurukul of Gujarat for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to, of course, it's a learning session and as an expert, but it's a learning for us, everyone. We are learning daily. So, come to the case. First, we said, uh, Dr. Bimal, uh, so, I said the global developmental delay. So, whenever yeah. we get any complaint, chief complaint, we do the differential diagnosis from the very beginning. This is my way of teaching. First, we do the, think of what are the causes of global developmental delay. Then, we will analyze and then go for the further history taking. So, uh, what do you think? What are the causes of global developmental delay? What could be the possible causes? Um, hypothyroidism can be a cause of global developmental delay. Pardon? Hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism. Cere okay. Cerebral palsy. So, you mean to say some diseases which can cause global, global developmental delay is a symptom. So, uh, it may be uh, that as uh, the my, uh, uh, expert already said that uh, Manish, it may be in antenatal period. And so, what are the causes which can cause the uh, global development? What are the disease or what are the insults that can happen in the antenatal period that may lead to the global development? From an antenatal period, mother can get congenital infection of uh, so dog. You, ha you have to see the, what are the signs and symptoms of congenital infection. Like rash, but joint pain. Fever with rash. Hmm. So, it will rule out the, those causes. So, the fever, rash and joint pain. Okay. Again, and what, what else? What else? There will be eclampsia, preeclampsia, placental insufficiency. Because these all lead to placental insufficiency. 
and that may lead to uh, the uh, cerebral palsy in the future. So uh, the, all the uh, antenatal history must be in detail. And um, so the, any infection during antenatal period, like not only did that tort infection or congenital infection, any other infection mother was having, then you come to the uh, uh, perinatal period, uh, the prolonged liver, polyamnitis, false swelling, of, um, like uh, all those things to be mentioned, because you have, that means you have ruled out the, uh, the infection during the perinatal period. Then of course in the postnatal period also the it can be septicemia meningitis now, and of course as uh, you said the presenter with the microcephaly, apparently as you said uh, with the travel to the country now you know the Zika virus is also coming and it's causing the microcephaly and that the global developmental delay whether it is due to the microcephaly or it is a part of the disease you don't know. Yet. So these things to be kept in mind that any travel history you now. Okay. Then in the uh, uh, history of present illness. First, what do you think in neurology, what would be the level of, uh, level? that is what is the topographical uh, defect? So it, it, according to you, it's a quadriplegia. Oh, yes. Or paraplegia. Quadriplegia. Quadriplegic variety. So it is quadriplegia, it's a diplegic variety, or all the four limbs are having, do you know the difference between diplegia, double hemiplegia, quadriplegia, these terms? It must be very clear. Yeah. So, if the upper limbs are minimally affected, the lower limbs are more affected than it's diplegia, if all the quad limbs are affected, then it's a quadriplegia. If upper limbs are more severe than the lower limb, then it's a double hemiplegia. All those terms is there. So, you must know, and you have, in the history, you have to define. You have to be very clear. As you said, there's no developmental uh, achievement. Yes. Huh? You could not see, no? Am I right? Sitting? Yeah. Sitting is not, not there, no? No. no so, right. total, huh, okay. No developmental milestones has been achieved except uh, you said in the only mother's recognition. In the social language. Language, language, language what, what is the uh, language is? By C level. By C level. So, what is the developmental yes. is according to the uh, language? Uh, no. Developmental? Sorry. Question? Sorry, when they will, yes. They can say by C levels at ASA. Nine months. Without meaning. Without meaning. They don't know the mama, papa, dada. Without meaning, they'll say um, by syllables at nine months. Then with meaning, they'll say the details. So this is very important to um, clarify whether he is calling mama to mama, dada to dada, papa to papa. Or he is uh, calling uh, uh, everyone to all me, mama, mama, papa, papa, dada, dada. It's very important. Mama. Yes, the child is uh, knowing mama, papa, dada. Knowing the person. Yes. That's good. Okay. So then first is the uh, uh, topography, then we try to look at the uh, anatomical side of the lesion, as is it may be yes. uh, cortical. So you try to um, think what are the cortical functions are involved, as you said, mental retardation, seizure, is there any speech, you said, no, if I see, uh, then visual disturbances. Because if we did not uh, achieve any malice, we can't go for the other uh, sensations and other um, modalities, if it would have been some milestones, we could have checked the other modalities of cortical sensation, all those things. This is not applicable in this particular patient. So, these things to be maintained. Then, what is the way uh, after uh, topography, then anatomical side, then what we look for? What is the pathology of that anatomical side? Yes, whether it is infective, congenital malformation, or traumatic, or uh, ischemic, or stroke, or whatever it is, or hypoxic, or, or damage. Then, we think of the disease. This is the way we can present in the neurology. Yeah. Okay. So um, um, this much of from my, my side, I think uh, he said, continue for the examination or Dr. Manish can add anything. Thank you so much, ma'am. I think uh, it was uh, a very beautiful description by Madam Dutta. And uh, uh, as she very, very rightly said, so once you have the phenotype, so the history should help us build up the phenotype. So the phenotype here is, there is global development. Right? There is Definitely a head size. We will we'll measure it in, the, in our examination, but there is microcephaly, there is epilepsy, probably there are abnormal movements as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at them when we get through the examination. So there may be epileptic uh, seizures, or there may be non epileptic movements in this patient. There's maybe the, something that happened at four years of age was probably dystonia, or maybe an uh, epileptic seizure. So let's Let's have a look at that. But your when you and your that's very rightly described by man. Uh, when you are when you are trying to take the history, 
you have to tease apart between all these things, right? Okay, build up what is the phenotype, and then go back, go go back to elucidate in your history, reach to an etiological diagnosis or an etiology based on 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 uh, all this history, and then you know we we go to the examination and uh, try to confirm whatever uh, is happening around. Okay, so uh, on 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 Ma'am's uh, summary of what she just said. How would you like to add anything in the history? Any other points which would help us build up the the differential diagnosis here and rule out a few things? So uh, anything which can complement. Don't repeat the history. Just let us know if anything needs to be complemented here, which you think may be appropriate to mention. So there is no travel history of mother. Okay. What else? In the antenatal history, uh, I said in the antenatal no, so any history, um, fever, no history rash. of any fever, rash, no okay. sir, no history Next of, uh, there is PIH in last 15 days of pregnancy, but there is no uh, seizure in mother, uh, eclampsia, is there? Okay. No, no eclampsia or no anything. No next one. Uh, one thing I would like to add in family history. Uh, actually, you know, this APLA and all those things can cause strokes. So it is a uh, uh, quite, quite obvious it's a quadruparitic, not uh, the hemorrhaging variety, but uh, as a history part, you must ask any history of death in the family members. Any thermophilic no. conditions? No history any of sudden stroke, death in any family member. Any stroke, history of stroke in the family. So, are there any other uh, history which would help us build was not taking any drugs apart from supplements okay. so what drugs what drugs are you looking at so what drugs are you looking at or what drugs of abuse you are looking at substance abuse are you looking at which may cause my concern. so is there any history i'll give you a clue was the mother was mother addicted with something any addictions no sir okay no so, alcohol or right so how does fetal alcohol syndrome present when these babies are born? Is the child would be limp. The child will be. And, uh... Okay, no problem. But then alcohol, fetal alcohol syndrome may be cause for microcephaly, some dysmorphism, right? Okay. Then she may be on anti-epileptics sometimes, and these anti-epileptics may also cause dysmorphism, smaller head size. Uh, mothers who are uh, having an HIV positive, they, they, they are HIV positive and if they are on Zydepidine or uh, some other drugs uh, for anti-HIV, these may also cause microscopy. So that, there are a few examples. When, so on, when you are talking about the antenatal history, as Ma'am said, very beautifully she described that you should take these histories. So in your child, so it was microcephaly, right? When you have microcephaly, think about any uh, exposure to teratogens, especially substance of abuse, any medication, okay, which may cause small head size, subsequently global developmental delay, right? And also then, you know, as she said, you think about the genital malformations, you think about, so if they are genetic disorders, genetic structural disorders, you think about inborn errors of metabolism, right? You think about congenital infections, okay? So let, so let, us, let us discuss a few uh, 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 congenital infections. So she said Zika. So how would Zika present uh, in, in the uh, in the immediate postnatal period? And how would mother have those antenatal features? What antenatal features or presentation a mother with Zika? Uh, so if she has an has a Zika infection, which may cause uh, uh, some implications on the fetus and then subsequently in the uh, in the baby what do you think will be uh, the presentation of Zika? At 
network. So, Vimal, I think your bandwidth is low. Uh, can you hear me? Are you there, Vimal? I'm sorry, sir. There was something. Connected. Yeah, no problem. Okay, no problem. No issue. No issue. Thank you. Yes, sir. So I was just sir, saying, he... what? How does if mother has a Zika infection, what is the history you're looking at? So, for example, in rubella, we talked about it. So, so lymphadenopathy, right? A rash, fever. Okay. What What do you think will be uh, uh, will mother be having when she has Zika? Uh, mother, first we would have to look for uh, mother's travel history. No, I, I'm talking about Zika. So if she is was to be get get a Zika infection in her antenatal period, what do you think mother would complain of? Fever. Fever. Okay. What else? Rash. Rash, right? Yes. Okay. And and what's the timeline in the antenatal period when you have a congenital Zika infection? Causing microcephaly and subsequent global developmental delay. Sir, in uh, first trimester. Okay, okay. Uh, you, you're very near to it. It's like rubella, you know, it's a systemic infection. Okay, so anything else to complement? Looking to or whatever we have discussed right now, and then we we can go ahead with the further with the case. Okay. Uh, we have to add any history from our also. So, uh, but, but trauma, but trauma should be also included. Right. So, one thing more if whenever you are taking a history of a baby who was born with microcephaly, go now, goes on to develop global developmental delay and spasticity later on, and epilepsy as well. So, always ask about whether there was a history of increased fetal movements, right? So yes, if there is increased fetal movements, that will be indicative of fetal seizure. So sometimes seizures occur only in the fetal period or, and then, you know, they, they may not have seizures, but uh, so for example, non-ketotic hyperglycinemia may have this, uh, right? Sulfite uh, um, and molybdenum cofactor deficiency may also have something like this, but the, not going into the etiology at this point in time, you must take that history. Always look for, always ask for whether the child had, whether the mother had anything in the antenatal period to have, you know, uh, uh, increased liquor or polyhydramnios or an oligohydramnios. Okay, fine. Yes, so that should be asked. So uh, I'm, I'm sure you made a comment there, but then, uh, so she had PIH, but not uh, any, yeah. any any abnormalities with her liquor. Yeah. So then indirectly you look for uteroplacental insufficiency. Then. Uh, there was something missing. You'd never talked about the fetal Dopplers, whether she had a Doppler or not. Did she? Yes, sir. Fetal Doppler was done, which was okay. informed to be normal. It was informed to be normal. So there yes, was sir. no feature suggestive of a uteroplacental insufficiency. Yes. Sir. Okay. And so during so the entire should... pregnancy, regular antenatal, uh, regular USGs were done, ultrasonograms. Okay. Four to five times. All were informed to be normal to the mother. Okay. So, uh, can you just summarize where, I, where we have reached and then go further with your examination and the rest of the history and the examination so that if, if ma'am has anything to comment, please ma'am. Uh, uh, very nicely, Dr. Manish said about the fetal movement, uh, the increased movement. Uh, I'd like to add that the decreased movement also important because maybe uh, hypotonia, maybe myopathy, or it may be SM, you don't know because you have not taken. As the baby seeks us, okay, uh, they won't survive the type 1 or not. But uh, in case of delayed uh, developmental and the reward, especially in neurological case, you always ask for both the increased fetal movement and decreased fetal movement to the antenatal period. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Just summarize whatever has happened until now and then go ahead with your rest of the history and examination. Uh, my patient is a six year old male child who is a known case of developmental delay in six months of age and presented to us with complaint of seizure. Since last two days, uh, the patient was born full term CS delivered with no uh, antenatal risk factor being PIH, but uh, patient was not cried immediately after birth and was not admitted in NIC. There were no feeding difficulty at one month of age till one three months of age, and uh, then the feeding difficulty was started. My child is having feeding difficulty, some abnormality in brain as suggested by two the two of the neurosonograms and 
there is microcephaly there is small head as compared to the face also that my child is in regular follow up with neuropediatrician and is on some regular medications for and child has experienced similar episode at 4 years of age what any behavioral any behavioral disorders any sleep, no. sleep alteration or sleep no no ma'am i uh, mentioned there are no sleep disturbances but once you finish the history you won't be allowed to ask the question in the second time So you are going to be examining the patient. So be in details while taking the history because you have to say the other comorbidities. So yes. that to be also inquired during the taking the uh, history. Yes, ma'am. Proceed. Yes, ma'am. I'm sh- starting with the examination part. Examination. I have examined the child. In good light, the child was in supine position on the examination table with verbal consent from mother. The child looks wasted and poorly nourished, with upper limbs in flexion and lower limbs in extension. So this is a sir, ma'am. This is the photo of the child. Vitals: the child is awake, temperature normal, ninety-eight point two Fahrenheit in right axilla, with digital thermometer. Pulse is eighty per minute, regular and right radial artery. Regular rhythm with good volume and all peripheral pulses well palpable. Respiratory rate of 20 breaths per minute. Regular abdominal thoracic type. Blood pressure of 94 by 58 mm in right brachial artery with sphygmo manometer at the level of the heart. CRT less than three seconds. SpO2 98% on Brumad. Failure is present. No ictus, cyanosis, clubbing, edema, and lymphadenopathy. According to anthropometry wise, my child has Weight of thirty-one percent of the expected and height of sixty-six percent of the expected, with HC head circumference being thirty-four point five centimeter. The child being underweight for the age with third degree stunting. In head to toe examination, head appears normal in relation to the face, suggestive of microcephaly. Hair appear normal, no asymmetry noted in the face. Eye, ear, nose appear normal. Oral cavity, lips normal, gums normal. Caries present in both upper and lower incisor, upper and lower bilateral first and second molar. Mucosa pink and moist. Oral hygiene poor. Neck normal. In limbs there is contractures present. In upper limb the contracture is present in bilateral wrist and elbow joint. Bilateral wrist is in flexion and elbow is in also flexion. Bilateral hip joints are dislocated. In lower limb, there is right knee flexion position with contracture, and left knee contracture present is in extended position. Bilateral ankle joints are are uh, having contracture in the plantar flexion. Scissoring present in lower limb. Chest is apparently normal. Bilateral symmetrical movements with respiratory respiration. No visible scars seen. Abdomen is scaphoid. External genitalia normal. Bilateral testes descended. In back and spine, there is scoliosis. No pressure sore or a neurocutaneous marker. A perineal hygiene was well maintained. No any uh, rash in the diaper area or perineal area. As per above history, I would like to go with examination of system, uh, central nervous system first. In CNS examination, my patient is awake. Our level of consciousness cannot be assessed. Uh, mood, memory. intelligence orientation they can be assessed in speech the patient speaks by lip by syllable in sleep there are no irregularities as observed by parents patient maintains eye contact with the mother bowel and bladder control are not achieved in cranial now second now the child follows the object fundus is not being done in direct and consensual light reflex are present and minimal sight reflex are present In third, fourth, and sixth cello, eyes at rest are central, and movement is present in all the direction. In fifth cello, there is chewing present, there is contraction of mesenteral and temporalis. In reflexes, corneal, conjunctival, and jaw jerk are present. In seventh cello, facial cello, the nasal labial fold is present on both the sides. Angle of the mouth is normal. There is chewing of saliva from both the angles of the mouth, and corneal and conjunctival reflexes are present. In eighth cranial, there is response to the sound. The child turns his head towards the sound. And uh, in ninth and tenth cranial, there is gag reflex is present, and uvula is in the midline. In eleventh cranial, 
uh, I I could not assess the winging of scapula, nor the twisting of head towards the one side. And in twelfth cranial now, the tongue is sent is in the center position at rest. In motor system, bulk of the muscle posture, both upper limbs are in adducted and internally rotated at shoulder joint. Bilateral upper limb flexed at elbow and wrist joint. Bilateral hip joint extended. Right lower limb in flexion and ankle in extension. While in left lower limb, the knee and ankle both are in extension. Wasting, generalized wasting of muscles is seen on palpation. There is flabby feeling in all four limbs. In power of muscle, at least two by five in both upper limbs. In lower limbs, the child there was no spontaneous movement seen. In tone of muscle on shaking of limbs, there is increased resistance is felt. On passive movement, there is increased resistance to passive movement and increased resistance with a catch is felt after that. There are there are some active movements in upper limb, but uh, tone during the active limb can't be assessed. In range of passive movement, there is decreased range of movement in all four limbs. Hypotonia is present in all hypotonia is present in all four limbs. And as per grade five, I'm sorry, uh, I'm uh, I'm interrupting. So when you say a catch was felt, why why don't you is it what does it indicate? If there is increased resistance with the catch, spasticity. So why don't you say spasticity? Okay, sir. Why do you want to say there was a catch and all those things? You know. Okay, sir. And it yes, it sir. brings us to some more uh, kind of things. So uh, what do you mean by catch and things like that, right? Okay. So just say spasticity. If this is spasticity. That's your yes, interpretation, sir. right? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. In reflexes, superficial reflex. Bilateral corneal and conjunctival reflex present. Abdominal reflex is present. Plantar bilateral extensor and trimastic reflex present. In deep tendon reflexes, biceps was bilateral jerk. Supinator was uh, supinator can be assessed due to contracture on bilateral limbs. In triceps can be assessed due to contracture. New uh, knee jerk was brisk in right knee. There was no clonus. In ankle jerk can be assessed due to contracture in plantar flexion position. And uh, coordination stance and gait can be seen. Patient is non-ambulatory, and on sitting, scissoring was seen. So why don't why couldn't you elicit a jerk? So even if there was a contracture in the triceps, so what do you what do you uh, what are you, when when you are looking at a say for example if it's a knee jerk, yes, what sir. are you doing exactly to elicit the jerk? Which tendon are you? Quadriceps. Quadriceps, right? So that's yes, where sir. you strike. Okay, you're yes, stretching sir. that tendon, and that creates a volume of impulse. Okay, and it's a stretch reflex, right? Yes, so sir. Stretching it, you have to see, you have to look at uh, uh, so there, there may be either what is the response? And there will be contraction of the quadriceps femoris. Right. So when there is a contracture, the, so if there is a contra, even if there is a contracture, so was this a contracture of the hamstring or the uh, quadriceps? Sir, of quadriceps. You said the 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 okay. So is that was a contracture of the well, so if only if there is like complete fibrosis and a static contracture of the muscle, uh, right? And if it's a complete fibrosis, you will not be able to elicit the reflex. Otherwise, you should have been able to elicit a reflex. And uh, even if you can, you can just see uh, the the muscle contracting rather than the knee extending. Okay. Were you not able to see even the even the slightest of contraction of the muscle? No, sir. Oh, so you think they are static contractures, so severe? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Let we will see. Okay. Sir, so in sensory system, superficial sensation, touch temperature can be seen. In pain, sensation flexion is present in response to pain. On deep pain, there are withdrawal response. And sir, uh, in cerebral signs can be assessed. There are no any involuntary movements. And sir, no signs of raised intracranial pressure. Sir, rest systems are normal. Sir, should I stop now? Yeah, I think they stop now. And I'll, uh, first, I'll like. Uh, can I come in? Yeah, sure, ma'am. Yes. Uh, okay. So we just uh, started with the cranial nerves. When we said the cranial nerves. Uh, in the second cranial nerves, uh, what are the things you should look for? I mean, second. Yes. So in second cranial nerves, we examine for acuity of vision. 
yes. color vision, field of vision, field and ophthalmoscopy. Yes. And yes. ophthalmoscopy. So if if it is possible, okay. If not possible, no, it's okay. It is also okay. But you said the light reflex, direct and indirect. So tell me the uh, pathway of light reflex. What is the afferent and the efferent? For direct, uh, you said no, right? Light reflex in the heading of second thing. So what is the afferent pathway, sensation, and what is the efferent pathway? Light reflex. Then only you will realize why I am asking the question. Yes. Just tell me what, what happens. When you close the light, what will happen? My pupils will constrict. That is because of which now? The second now would be carrying the sensation, and third yes. would be uh, yes. causing the. Okay, so uh, second and third both nerves are involved. So, how yes. can you say the taste in the second nerve after without examining the third nerve? You got my point? So, light reflex yes. and direct and index should be uh, explained after the examination of third forces. So it's, okay. It comes under the after third force, not in the second nerve heading. Second nerve is this four heading. Equity have vision, maybe long distance, short distance, hand counting, menacing, whatever, PR, PL, all those things. Field of vision, whether possible or not, because according, according to the maturity and the, uh, I mean, the comprehension of the child the, and the uh, cognitive functions, all those uh, matters, if you do the field of vision, then the color vision also, and then the optimism. So here you can do, if possible at all, you can do the color optimism and the light, so you are throwing the light. These two. Then the third, four, six, after examining the extraocular muscle movement, then you go for the light expression. Okay. Yes. Then again, and fifth, also, again, you have to say in the although we are able to do or not, at least you should mention the headings sensory and motor. Seventh, also, we are having sensory or motor. Yes, sir. Eight, sensory nine. Motor. Uh -huh. So, this part to be uh, explained. And in the heading, also, I saw you didn't mention the autonomy. Uh, autonomic nervous system should be one of the headings at the end. And uh, signs of meningeal irritation, so you said no signs of meningitis, did you say that? Or yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And uh, involuntary movements is not in a separate heading, I think it is in the examination motor system. Okay. So you have uh, spread it the thing, there should be in a typical heading, you know, the yes, laws, then the motor system, then the sensory system, then the, uh, the reflexes, then uh, the skull and spine, cerebellus, and all those you have said. But the autonomy is left out, so that it should be important in the world. Whether they will get it or not, it's very important. And we are concerned. Okay. So that's part of the examination. So what? And this is the uh, knee, uh, reflex in the right knee. Why didn't you do in the left? What happened to the left knee? Ma'am, the left knee was having also a contracture, ma'am. Yes, right knee was. Contract. Yes, it was yes, a fixed right contract, as you said, static and fixed contracture. Yes, yes ma'am, fixed contracture. Okay. Okay. About the clonus, you said uh, which clonus you mentioned? Plant, plantar or ankle clonus or the clonus? Didn't mention that. No, ma'am. Uh, right knee only I tested for clonus. No, no. You said no clonus. Huh? You mentioned the no clonus. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, which clonus? clonus means patellar clonus or ankle clonus? That to be also explained. Yes, ma'am. It might be both. Huh? You are not yes, able to do the patellar clonus or absent. So, but I have to be very specific about the uh, anatomy of the things. Yes. And then, uh, uh, did you see the other reflexes like domestic reflex and the male child? Yes, I have seen that also. Plantar? Plantar, plantar ma'am, bilateral plantar were in extension. It was an extension. Yes. All the components of extension was there or some components are there? What are the components? Some components. What are the so what are the components of uh, plantar extensor? Like we say, the vermis is a positive extensor, isn't it? Yes. No. So normally, plantar can be elicit. Uh, we go from the toe towards the. That is the uh, method. I'm not asking the method. Interpretation. Yes. Like uh, Dr. Manish has said, no, don't uh, say uh, catch and all. You just say the interpretation. What did you get it? You got the class night variety, you did this past it is rigidity, and then when you ask how did you know it is a class night not rigidity, then you will explain all those things. So you don't have to yes. say the explanation or the uh, procedure, just the interpretation. And there was 
plantar flexion of the at the ankle joint ma'am extensor extensor dorsiflexion <laughs> dorsiflexion any other companies then no because the face contest we don't expect also but they should know what are the components of this any traffic changes because long standing is a bit red and any bit so no ma'am that i have also mentioned there are no pressure so or any seen any body odor is it important any dysmorphism mm -hmm. ma'am there are caries so ma'am there was a no, they are, uh, why uh, actually when you thinking of a cerebral palsy huh? you always think of what you, why it is not a cerebral palsy what are the what you, i mean clues which can lead to the uh, other things cerebral palsy that should be ruled out uh, from the general survey to from the end the general survey you should have to look at and you said the small head never said the small head always said the circumference what is the centimeter in centimeter Sir, uh, ma'am, the head circumference is thirty-four point five centimeters at and six that, years of age. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and that you can say by graph if the microscopy is there, but always say yes, the microscopy only. Then uh, that any dysmorphism in the face, you didn't mention that. No, That's yes, ma'am. No, no gross asymmetry of the face. Not only asymmetry. Any... There may be upward slanting. There yes. may be downward slanting. Yes, there may be symprosis. There may be thick leaves. There may be from yes. coarse features. There may be something. Maybe due to some other coarse features and all something. Don't be genetic. Okay. Then any body body odor, any neurocutaneous no. markers. Yes, ma'am. No purine neurocutaneous markers seen. Yes, also. any organomegalies. Ma'am, no liver and spleen normal. No any organomegaly apparently felt. Yes, these things to be explained because that means you are telling your exam. Now I have already ruled out what are the possible causes of non CP. Okay. Yes. Anything else, Mr. Tony? Is it an act? So all points covered. Uh, I think. Uh, There's one one thing which I wanted to know. You said there are caries, right? Okay. Do you know yes. what is dentinogenesis imperfecta and what is enamelogenesis imperfecta? Have you heard of those terms? No. Okay. So uh, on in many of our patients, pediatric patients especially, who may have some genetic disorder or a genetic abnormality. Uh, especially if it involves the ectoderm there may be something called as an enamelogenesis imperfecta sometimes they may have a dentinogenesis imperfecta and these give us a clue to the underlying etiology okay now it it very often happens that many of our of even including us as neurologists and sometimes practitioners and everybody we confuse enamelogenesis imperfecta with caries okay right so whenever so it's it's basically what is enamelogenesis imperfecta it's it's a dystrophic uh, formation of the enamel right and it may have a genetic origin or sometimes it may also have uh, it may also occur in uh, congenital infections right they give us a clue about what's happening around so uh, if you were to tease apart between whether this was two caries or whether this was an enamelogenesis imperfecta ask them what happened to their temporary teeth to the the deciduous uh, the the temporary teeth and uh, you will understand that if the teeth was not formed right from uh, the start the onset uh, so the if right from the eruption it was if it was abnormal it's more less likely to be caries Okay, so I don't know. I've not seen your patient, but that's one clue which I wanted to give you. Okay, so let's put it now. What is your diagnosis? Yes, sir. You're done uh, with your. You're done with everything. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So what's your diagnosis? Sir, sir I just want to ask one question, sir. Sure. The thing you said now, enamelogenesis imperfecta, that would be seen in all the teeth. Ah, uh, well, uh, that's I. I'm not very sure. but then it's it's more most more commonly involves the incisors uh, mostly okay. mostly that's yeah. something to do with the development but i i don't know exactly but yeah even even, yeah. even in uh, porphyria and all those uh, right. uh, resistant decays and all you can get the enamel defect yeah so, uh, because ma'am in this patient the other uh, caries were not similar in all the teeth and two or three teeth did not have any caries okay so probably okay. we we do not we have not seen the yes. patient and as ma'am said uh, also contributed to this that many other etiologies which can cause this 
So uh, you must make sure whether you're looking at carries yes. because yes, we, we very loosely use the term carries. Yes, sir. Okay. Fine. Okay. So what's what's your diagnosis now? You want to add anything else in the examination? Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, Dr. Manish, I would like to add. Uh, okay, continue. Ma'am, please. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to tell you, as you said, the severely malnutrition is there. So signs of vitamin deficiency is also to be ruled out. Is it that when they were zero, so is because for any other uh, the countries that is like this, but all those things, because these all uh, what why we are going to be uh, do the complete diagnosis because we want to give a comprehensive and complete management, isn't it? Yes. So uh, if our diagnosis will be complete, then only you can give the com comprehensive management. Otherwise, you will miss something. So yes. you have to look for the vitamin deficiency signs also. Because yes. chronically in malnourished, they said the thirty six percent, I think. And grade three malnutrition is there. So whether the vitamin deficiency signs are there or not, we have to mention. Yes. Okay. Now tell me your diagnosis. My diagnosis: six-year-old male child with global developmental delay with static encephalopathy with spastic quadriplegia, GMFCS grade five with motor with microcephaly with convulsion with bilateral hip dislocation with Bilateral elbow, wrist, knee contracture with grossly normal vision and hearing, with difficulty in chewing, with constipation in a completely immunized child with wasting, probable etiology of some antenatal or perinatal insult, possibility of spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy. Okay, hold that slide. Hold yes, that slide. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I will get it. Okay, so let's take uh, uh, each one of them, right? Yes, sir. So you say this is global developmental delay, very apparent. Because uh, what is the definition of global development today? More than two uh, uh, parts, like gross motor, fine motor, personal social language. More than two domains, there is uh, eighty percent or seventy percent or more. Okay, and Delay. then there is there's something which I always point out to almost all these sessions, and I'm so much thankful to Kushkat IAP. They have been inviting me very often, and uh, I, I I really feel grateful. But Every time I come here, I, I notice something. So hold that slide. Continue to share that slide. There's, there's uh, more. I think more. it's uh, not more than two, it's two and more. Yeah. So the, the problem is that it's not, uh, but previously we used the term gross motor delay. Okay. Yes. Now we, it's not gross motor. It's actually locomotor delay. Okay. okay. Right. Locomotor. So that's called as locomotor. And the fine motor is more of an adaptive uh, domain. Okay, so it's a global developmental delay. We agree to that. You say you say this is static encephalopathy, right? And then you yes. say he was he the the parents noticed that something happened at five year five six months of age. They felt that the child was having some problems, and he progressively became very stiff, right? He developed an epilepsy at six years of age. Then how do you justify the term static encephalopathy and that too immediately after you say global developmental delay? You didn't even consider the epilepsy and the the, the you know uh, the, 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 the the development of epilepsy and the development of progress in spasticity before you really you know you 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 jumped on static encephalopathy straight away without even taking into account the development of later epilepsy and. Uh, the progressive stiffness. How do you justify that? Alab diagnosis pura nahi hua. Isse pehle tumne kaha ki ye static encephalopathy hai. So what do you mean by static? And just explain as the continuation of Dr. Manish. What is what do you mean by static encephalopathy? Man, there is uh, one progressive. All there is no progression in the disease. Uh, what progression? It should be very clear. Progression of disease means what do you mean? Just see me in the layman term. I mean, uh, I could give an example. But like there is, I say there is retrograde, uh, retrogression of milestone. Here, once what is stopped at what level, it will be stopped at that only. There won't be. Uh, you mean to say there's no re uh, there's no regression. You mean to say there's yes, no there regression? Is, yes, ma'am. Retrogression means you mean to say that there is no regression. Is it? I couldn't get your answer. 
what do you mean uh, uh, static in static what do you mean with the static and encephalopathic this is a clinical term i talk about that non progressive you are on the static ha huh? dr manish you can continue yeah okay so vimal uh, in your patient you say you use as you said that this is more you know a static kind of brain disorder we don't call it encephalopathy anymore because it has to be a static brain disorder which of which okay. encephalopathy may be a part or may not be a part right okay so this is more likely to be a static brain disorder and uh, you based it on what what grounds did you base it on there is no progression or regression oh so the child progressively has a breathing stiffening the child developed an epilepsy later on on to consider the progression he became more stiff he was not stiff at 6 months and then you said in your history he gradually became very stiff yes right yes. and uh, and moreover he developed an epilepsy at 4 years of age so do you still continue with your static and brain disorder or would you like to change it? okay so you seem confused so yes, that actually you should be very clear about the term that is static encephalopathy is not a clinical progression it is a pathology which is happening in the brain that's why it was a static encephalopathy but now the name that's why it's in the name has been changed we say the locomotor disorder no more is it is static encephalopathy it is a disorder locomotor disorder so so why do you so let's tease apart let's let's look at your patient again and yes. see whether this is a static brain disorder or is it a progressive brain disorder okay so they when did the parents feel that the child started to become become stiff that at four months to six months of age they noticed that child is becoming stiff and the the child was fine before that because you said there was no there were some feeding difficulty at 3 months of age there were some feeding difficulty yes sir. but the child was not stiff right but no. the child had microcephaly yes at sir. birth, at birth. Okay. then he developed feeding difficulties he did not have feeding difficulties he was breastfeeding well even in the, at, at at the neonatal period right yes sir that true Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then, at three to four months of age, he started to have problems with his feeding. Yes, sir. Right? You said he also started to drool from from both the angles, the other side, right? Okay. Yes, sir. And then he started to become more and more stiff. Yes, sir. Right. So, would you like to change what you said? Because for me, he was progressing. Okay, sir. But sir, the stiffness was maybe not using the limb. So, so stiffness was not using the limb. But you said that at birth there were no concerns, there were no issues, right? It's moving the extremities well, and even at uh, at at two to three months, he didn't have any problem, right? But they they were be changing nappies even at that time. So, if there was a little bit of stiffness, it started to happen. Okay, so it was known to be there. ठीक uh white matter white matter the, yes sir. specifically white matter white matter so i for me it's like the white matter regenerating or getting abnormal at say 4 to 5 months of age is that true do you agree with this yes sir right so it was yes. probably not even if it was not myelinated so the the, the, the myelination Uh, continues until two months, two years of age. But then you see that the child was not stiff uh, at that time point in time uh, until 
four to five months of age, and then it's starting to become progressive. It's continued to become stiff and then develop contractures. You know, it become but never uh, could uh, could sit or never could hold neck, right? But but if this was a static brain disorder, it would not have happened, right? Do you agree? Yes, sir. So I don't agree with your static brain disorder mind. Okay. I agree that the child is having a spastic brain disease, right? Okay. Yes, sir. The child is having global development today, right? The yes, sir. Child uh, has GMFCS grade five. So grade five usually new uh, uh, is fine here. And uh, can you tell me what is GMFCS? Just one line. What is the basis of GMFCS? So modified Ashworth is for the range of movements. Movements. Right? And yes, sir. GMFCS is for sir mobile uh, mobility. How the patient is ambulatory or not? So deciding the need for assisted devices. Devices. Okay? It tell us that what is the need for assisted devices. Okay. When the child is having microcephaly, his birth head circumference thirty four centimeter never increased. Right. So nothing, nothing really gained. So if it would have been a static brain disorder, we would have seen some. सब से सम ग्रोथ राइट बिकॉज़ द ब्रेन थोड़ा बहुत तो कुछ होता है उसको ठीक है मे बी 36 तक पहुंचा 37 तक पहुंचता है थैंक यू ओके देन द यू सेड बायलेटरल हिप डिसलोकेशंस रादर यू बिकॉज़ यू नो द मॉस्टिटिंग द डिसलोकेशन इज एक्सट्रीमली पेनफुल एंड सो आई थिंक दिस वाज मोर ऑफ अ सबलक्सेशन बिकॉज़ ऑफ अ डिस्प्लास्टिक हिप व्हिच रिजल्टेड बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस प्रोग्रेसिवली इंक्रीजिंग स्पास्टिक प्लास्टिसिटी ओके Right? Then there are contractures. You said grossly normal vision. Never say that. Never say that. Okay, sir. Vision, right? Okay. Yes. It suffice. It suffice to say that the child fixes and follows. Right? As Ma'am very rightly said, you you never mentioned about the fundus of this child in your examination. Did you did you mention something about the fundus? No, the fundus was not done. That's a very crucial point. So optic atrophy. I would be looking in this child for optic atrophy, cherry red spot, retinitis pigmentosa, colobomas, right, and many other things which yes. will, which will which will pertain to this patient, right? Okay, you never mm -hmm. mentioned that. So it's a, did someone have a look at the fundus or the eye in this child? Are you there, Vimal? I think it looks like we've lost Vimal. Ma'am, are you are you are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. I, I think uh, Vimal. Uh, we've lost Vimal, so okay, let Vimal join it. Yes, sir. He is there in. Uh, yes, but now he's some late issue. So there may be some late. Maybe yeah. He's having some late issue. We will join soon. Let's. Wait. No problem. No problem. It's a. He 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 did work very hard. So that was a, a wonderful effort. It's a difficult case, really, and uh, there are many points to learn here for all of us. Yes. Yes. So, so Vimal is there. And it's uh, nicely presented. That case is also nicely. Presented. So Vimal, yes, did come. someone have a look at his fundus or his eye? Eye, maybe the eye for the disease. You know. You can uh, go through the uh, diagnosis by seeing the eye only. Unmute yourself. You unmute yourself. Sir, previously the parents were advised some uh, eye scan, but they did not get it. But they didn't get it. Here in our during the course of hospitalization, we did a fundus, and fundus was normal. Oh, it was normal. So the optic nerve yes, was sir. normal. There was no other stigmata of any no. other neurodegenerative disorder. Right? There were no neurostructural. Yes, Uh, 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 so to indicate as a pointer to neurostructural disease as well, the iris was fine, yes. the cornea was fine. Everything. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Uh, then, so uh, then coming on to your please put 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 in your slide back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One okay. Minute. So we said there is probably something going on. In, something happened in the perinatal period, and uh, yes, sir. Now you say you don't agree with your. Uh, so, so you still want to stick to your static brain disorder kind of progression, or would you like to change it? Sir, this will be progressive. So, maybe progressive. Maybe you know it's an ongoing yeah. process. So, maybe uh, a static brain disorder, which is 
where not a static brain disorder but something wherein the white matter got damaged the gray matter was already damaged right yes, maybe, maybe in the intrauterine period so there was small head size the white matter also went bad later on right so there's there's so now yes, there's the involvement of gray matter and the white matter both the deep gray what is the deep gray the basal ganglia is there any evidence of involvement of the uh, deep gray there are no any abnormal involuntary movements sir so basal ganglia right. so the deep gray doesn't seem to be involved right yes sir. you said the, the brain stem looks to be involved do you agree with that or not sir uh, the vitals are fine there's sir feeding, there's some feeding abnormalities some feeding it, difficulties you sir. said but yes, i sir. specifically looked at your slides and you said the gag was normal and yes, drooling he said drooling, drooling is there why is there drooling so so that Drool. that you know that that is a disconnect because it's, yes, it's so if he, the child was having some feeding abnormalities either there was an hyperactive gag which happens in spasticities okay yes, we, we we call it as a gag abnormality so a pseudo bulbar uh, kind of involvement Falsy. or there may be a bulbar involvement so in this in your case it looks like it's a pseudo bulbar involvement pseudo. right so yes, do you sir. agree to that yes sir Okay, so some involvement of the brainstem, whether this is the brainstem white matter, the pyramidal tracts, or something, or the, or the cranial nerve nuclei, we really do not know. It doesn't look yes, like sir. exclusively the cranial nerve nuclei. It looks like more to that, right? Then, what about the peripheral nervous or uh, peripheral nervous system? Do you have any involvement of the cord and the peripheral nervous system here? The child responded to pain. Okay. There was no, flexion no. response. Uh, let's let's talk about. You said the muscles feel very flabby. Flabby, yes, sir. So there is. Why is that? The one is that disuse. There is no impulse from the above. Ah, oh. so they they may feel flabby because either they are hypotonic. Okay, but if yes, there is a progressive wasting of the muscles, the muscles, you know, because uh, they may they they may feel flabby. that's 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 a reasonable explanation uh, for uh, getting them flappy but i agree that there is the the the, the 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 there is hypertonia and there is spasticity there is plantar extensor okay so let's yes. talk about uh, would you like to revise your diagnosis in one line again uh, 6 year old male child with global developmental delay with possibility of progressive Oh, don't don't put it here. So what what I said? Okay. So sub co curricular. You can say it's a static yes. brain disorder. Yes, you know, you just you just don't commit it here, right? Kali yes, global sir. developmental delay, but you don't com commit it. Yes, sir. With global delay, with spastic quadriplegia, GMFCS grade five, with microcephaly, with convulsion, with bilateral hip subluxation, with contractures present in bilateral elbow, wrist, and knee, with Upper grossly probably suitable for palsy. Normal so, hearing. The difficulty in chewing is not what because we, we would never expect this child to chew. Yes, sir. Right. It's more of a you. You meant what you meant was probably swallowing. Yes, sir. Okay. There is difficulty in swallowing with constipation. In a completely immunized child with uh, possibility of with wasting with probably so not wasting progressive. it's actually severe acute malnutrition right the cause of malnutrition yes, is because he doesn't feeding well and you know he has a very bad cns disorder so it's uh, he's having severe acute malnutrition that's what we say right uh, uh, i i yes, just, just want to uh, age has crossed this five yes, years yes yes i wanted to comment for on that only i wanted to comment on that first thing in your diagnosis you don't have to say the symptoms global developmental delay is not a diagnosis it's a symptom So you say that your diagnosis first. That means that as we have already discussed the phenotypic diagnosis. What is it? Phenotypic diagnosis is a spastic quadriplegia. Okay. Yes. So what if you go to the definition of cerebral palsy? How it is defined? Ah, there is a disorder of locomotor system with the perception, behavior, recognition, and all. Similarly, you have to say the diagnosis is a spastic quadriplegia with this and that, whatever you are telling. Then. Uh, The as I said, microcephaly in the mention of the mental retardation. This is very important. This cognition failure is there, obviously is there. Yes. So yes. mention the cognition failure, behavioral disorders, absent or present, always add. This is the five things we have to add: perception, sensation, behavioral, cognition, mental retardation. 
and it moves. So these things are said. Then plus minus, like in malnutrition, wasting, we use the order severe up to five years. That's why you can say the uh, under, severe undernutrition, like a six years old child, we use the BMI. No? Underweight, yes. Uh, uh, BMI, <coughs> I think it is severely underweight or underweight, whatever it comes under the BMI. So above yes. five years, we uh, say according to BMI. We always say the according yes. to BMI, not wasting or other things. Because after five years, we um, follow that formula. Then uh, the other findings like vision, hearing, speech, and all this. So you And then you say the site of the lesion, then the etiology, and then the gross uh, motor function score. So this should be the uh, way of telling the diagnosis, not the uh, developmental delay with the static and cellular disease. First, you phenotype, it, then the site of vision, then the uh, etiology, then the diagnosis, then other, other things. Okay. Yes, yes. yes. So uh, now tell us whether do you think this is a static brain disorder or a progressive, because you know that changes everything. Agar tum static bolte ho, it's a different thing. If you say this is a progressive disorder, you know it's a completely different thing. And and then uh, when you say if this is epilepsy, now we say either this is structural epilepsy or a structural genetic epilepsy. So the, in this case, I would tell, I would say probably a structural epilepsy. Okay. So that's the newer Eli uh, nomenclature. Okay. So what do you think? Static or progressive? The progression is seen. There is increased plasticity. There are uh, feeding difficulties have been started. So uh, each one of the experts here would say that uh, we don't agree with the fact that increasing spasticity is part of the evolution of the spasticity, right? So yes, you sir. need to tell us something because I, I would still say this is a progressive disorder, right? It's it's damaging, it's continuing to damage the, the, the brain, right? So uh, do you have something to, you know, really justify that? Anything? So why? Let's let's say that for five months that the child did not have a, any evidence of a white matter damage, right? And then the child started to have uh, evidence of white matter damage, right? So that that's that's yes. the one thing. And then at five years of age, the four years of age, the child had some uh, some more telltale evidence of an ongoing cortical uh, uh, damage. So epilepsy, although epilepsy can occur. In a, even, even in a static brain disorder, uh, and that can be a part of the static process as well, and it can manifest at any time. But then it, it indicates something more about the gray, uh, uh, gray involvement, right? And the head circumference is never ever increased from the birth, right? So it looks like the, the, the child has never gained anything. The child, so, so something kept on, you know, deteriorating the child, okay? Now, do you agree this is a this is a, uh, a progressive disorder because I'll also ask you the differential diagnosis in both the categories. If you think this is static brain disorder, I'll ask you the differential diagnosis and I'll also ask you uh, in the uh, progressive uh, brain disorder, right? So let's say, ab tum dono mein se sa rakh rahe ho? I think he's a bit confused. Uh, it should be very clear that a static encephalopathy, we don't say in clinical term. This is a pathological term. The pathology, whatever is in the brain, that is static. But the manifestation may vary according to evolution, according to development. Are you clear with that? Yes. So she is giving you a clue. Ma'am is giving you a clue. We are all, we are both facilitators here. Each one of yes. us. Right? So we're trying to facilitate that. We, uh, very frankly say, uh, speaking, I have not seen the patient. I may not be able to give you a clear cut diagnosis, but at this point in time, we need to go on, on both the ways. But we have to consider both of them. Okay. So let's build, build that up. Static. Okay. So go ahead with your static. What do you think uh, is the etiology here? The etiologic diagnosis. And differential diagnosis. So there was some Antenatal or perinatal insult in the brain. What is the evidence? What is Sir, the, the evidence of antenatal and perinatal insult? 
sir in antenatal we have risk factor of uh, pih oh so pih in many mothers in almost so pregnancy mein do you know what is the frequency of pih so pih the hypertensive heart hypertensive disease of the pregnancy it, it is almost 33 to 40% right to har ek mein to nahi hota hai you don't get so bad so you said the dopplers are fine yes right? sir it didn't it was almost uneventful except for the ph i don't agree with that what are, what is there to be some uh, fever which mother might have missed or congenital no, no. infection no 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 what i am trying to say is just tell us what is the phenotype the etiological phenotype so when you said the antenatally something happened so what is the etiological phenotype the the, the diagnostic phenotype say for example cerebral palsy or a torch type of infection causing this so what aapne sabse upar kya rakha hai static brain disorder cerebral palsy okay so cp mein you what i'm not convinced with the fact you so itni severe injury hui agar aap antenatal you you think this was an antenatal uh, uh, kind of event which caused this i i do not from your history i am not uh, considering that i don't agree that this was sufficient enough to cause such a problem then what is it the there is one more perinatal event what is it the that not cried not cried immediately after birth sir oh so the baby was never in problem so other sorry sir baby did cry ha huh. what does this indicate the baby was just born depressed right that yes, doesn't indicate that the child had asphyxia because or a hypoxic ischemic uh, insult to the brain right because there was no evidence of any encephalopathy okay so kuch bhi nahi hai wo to depressed peda hua probably and zaruri thodi hai ki every baby should cry the born so zaruri hai ki every baby should cry So there was something very concrete to say that this is cerebral palsy, and let me know the definition of cerebral palsy. So we are already it's twenty five, so we need to go build it up further. So what's it? Uh, what, what do you think uh, is the, the what is the definition of cerebral palsy? In the definition of cerebral palsy includes this uh, that is very static disorder of the uh, muscle motor part. मूवमेंट की अपनी है या नहीं Hey sir, hey. there is insult to the developing brain. Hi, there is the insult to the developing brain. Sir, in the white matter and the what is not anything. What is that event? आपने दो बोले P I N चिंत मदर and the other was what depressed. I I don't see yes. that. Give me something convincing. अगर है तो ठीक नहीं तो let's on to the next definition your static brain disorder that oh how many cases you do it with the etiological factors in case of cerebral palsy you get the um, etiological factors in all the cases ma'am uh, microcephaly at birth yes that is not etiology that's a thing it was a clinical uh, presentation hai. that's the clinical presentation Well, कोई ऐसा इवेंट है विच यू कैन टेल अस विच मे हैव यू नो कॉज दिस चलो कोई बात नहीं नेक्स्ट लेट्स मूव ऑन टू दी नेक्स्ट वन वी आर नॉट कन्विंस विद सेरेबल पॉलिसी व्हाट इज द नेक्स्ट फिनोटाइप दी फिनोटिपिक डायग्नोसिस फॉर योर पेशेंट टू से दैट दिस इज अ स्टैटिक ब्रेन डिसऑर्डर व्हाट इज द अदर फिनोटाइप कंजेनिटल इंफेक्शंस यस सर बट वी ऑलरेडी एज यू सेड फीवर is not there the uh, fine i agree to that not many mothers would know ki usko fever hai they may, they may just feel you know ki mujhe malaise hai main bahut zyada you know they may feel tired there may be some rash which may go unnoticed right to wo ho sakta hai nahi ho sakta hai ho sakta hai sir 
जिसको हमें सोचना चाहिए So why do you think Zika? Again, Zika. It's not that common. Yes, sir. But uh, sir, in other infections, many no, no, times. No, no. Let more... just just let let us know what is the common presentation of genitally acquired Zika virus infection. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, first there would be microcephaly at That's birth. Right. right. Yes, sir. What else? And, uh, Sir, uh, there will be uh, tone abnormality. There will be uh, decreased brain tissue. Uh, there will be lim- less movement of the muscle, and uh, so you know, uh, it just presents hearing loss, principally developmental delay. Okay. And yes, uh, a CP-like picture. Okay, so abnormal. Yes, yes, not so much yes, for its spasticity, which may start at five months of age. You know, they may be spastic, right? So they may show at tonal birth. abnormalities right at birth. Okay, at birth. And then, birth. And then yes, even sir. in the early neonatal period, that's that's quite a possibility. Okay. Yes, sir. They don't cause progressive brain damage like uh, like your patient. Uh, had and the 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 white matter going bad and manifesting like this. Okay, and do you think this may be rubella or uh, toxoplasma or CMV? If yes, then uh, what? Then not then why? Sir, uh, rubella, there would be uh, cataract and hearing. Oh, uh, both okay. Would when be. they when they are born, they are born. What is the weight? Yeah. There are other stigmatous or congenital infections, other than only microcephaly. What else is there? When they are born. They are born. As Ma'am is saying, very rightly say, that microcephaly. Ke alawa aur kya dekhte hain? Commonly torch infections. Ma'am, when they are born. They are born. Birth weight kaisa hota hai? Birth weight normal, sir. Normal. Aur term de bhi hota hai? No, in the, uh, it would be uh, preterm. Oh, preterm and birth weight would be yes, Ap- uh, lower side, low birth weight, appropriate. Ah. Birth weight. So they may be they may be SGA or IUGR, right? So more yes, like sir. more specifically IUGR, they may yes, or may not have a preterm birth. Okay, so IUGR yes. then then uh, कोई jaundice से लेना देना होता है शुरू में if they they may have any kind of hyperbil which may be common. Yes, sir. Right, so direct hyperbil may be common in these common. babies. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Okay, yes. and they may be encephalopathy in the in, in that in, in the perinatal period, especially if it yes, is congenital herpes. Right, okay. Yes. So congenital transmitted herpes, but not CMV. CMV may cause lung infection, yes, or maybe right. So, do you think in your child any of these was possible? No. Okay. So let's move on the third category, which may again present like this. Right. So congenital infections. Just remember what Ma'am said. Okay. Etiology wise, what can happen? You may have congenital infections. You may have an antenatal insult, which may cause a phenotype like cerebral palsy. Of course, congenital infections may cause cerebral palsy. Right. What else can cause yes. a, a similar picture? If there is a in con- uh, antenatal or in the perinatal, we can. I can. No, no, no. Let's forget in- about the insults. Right. Let's let's think beyond. The leg terrace could also. What the... I mean is, me. So let's 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 just talk about what are the etiologies in any child, congenital, right? Genetic, structural, okay. Then yes, uh, congenital versus so, uh, infections, and uh, uh, genetic, structural, inborn errors of metabolism, vascular. Members, members said stroke, right? So vascular. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, ये मैंने तुम्हें चार broad दिए. Okay, we pick pick something from these. Can this be a structural brain abnormality? 
Yes, sir. Probably which one? Yes, this sir. type. Type. Any brain abnormality you mentioned? Which one? So structures of. So have you heard about neuronal migration defects? Yes, sir. What are the what are neuronal migration defects? Dysencephaly, agyria, pachygyria. Have you heard about them? Yes, sir. And uh, other other defects such as orthoencephaly, uh, sizencephaly, which may be uh, uh, some cortical malformations. Can there be a possibility in this child? Where the child is having global developmental delay, the child epilepsy developed epilepsy, the child has progressive spasticity. Can there be a possibility? Yes, sir. Right. So, should we that consider structural possible. malformations, genetic structural yes, malformations? Yes, sir. Okay. And then coming on to the vascular etiology, can there be a vascular etiology here? Say you are telling right answer. No, no. no why? Sir. Why? 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 Why?
Okay. So always remember, babies who are born depressed may have neurology, may or may not have a neurological abnormality at birth. We must consider that's very right. Anesthetic agents to the mother, heroin or opium, right? So uh, so yes. opium addiction. Uh, so they may all be born depressed, right? But, but then, then we must consider there are some amino acids which may cause a picture yes. like this. Metabolic some disorders. mitochondrial disorders. And amongst these, there are some treatable disorders, right? So if they are born depressed, okay, you must consider a non-ketotic hyperglycemia, sulfide oxidase in molybdenum cofactor deficiency, okay, then uh, MSUD, then ammonia syndromes, the, the, the urea cycle yes. defects, mitochondrial disorders of respiratory chain, okay, and then there is another amino acid which is serine, okay. Right. So, what do you think? In me se koi aisa hai jo treatable hai. Then a list of the bullied, born depressed, microcephaly, uh, even at birth, intrauterine, and then they continue to have a progressive spasticity maybe two to three months as the substrate becomes more and more your of your brain becomes damaged. Or are there any any con uh, any conditions which you can pick up from these? There is also Ammonia. some ADSL deficiency, which may also cause uh, look like an asphyxia mimic. And urea cycle disorders are right, but they don't present remember. like this. We'll have a florid yes. encephalopathy even at about yes. in the during the unit period, and the mitochondrial yes. disorders of respiratory chain. And they are also suitable. Right. They also will present with some. So encephalopathy, seizures, non-ketotic hyperglycinemia, they will present right in the intrauterine first. Okay. They may have seizures, then hiccups, yes. brainstem abnormalities. More of the posterior uh, part of the brain is involved, the brainstem, right? And MSUD also has some more involvement of the posterior part of the brain and then also the cortex, right? Then have you heard about the serine deficiency? Sorry, sir. Serine. Serine. R-I-N-E. Serine deficiency. Okay, so serine deficiency can present exactly like your case. It's very treatable, looks uh, almost the same, although they may they may present much more earlier. Okay, and it's a treatable disorder. You just supplement serine, and then you know uh, they, they 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 are partially treatable, not exactly treatable. Even sulfide oxidase molybdenum cofactor may be uh, treatable to some extent, but it causes more encephalopathy, earlier seizures. Okay. So in your progressive brain disorder list, I would always include these, okay? I'll always talk about uh, these and especially the mitochondrial disorders of respiratory chain as well, which are very much treatable. So ma'am, uh, anything which you... Yeah, yeah, very nicely explained the differential diagnosis. You must exclude all those things because you have microcephaly and the new symptoms appear. Okay, so uh, always keep a differential diagnosis, always your antenna should be high about the differential diagnosis and then it, uh, give the advice. Otherwise, as I rightly said, Dr. Manish, if they will uh, deteriorate and there's a rapid deterioration will be there. It won't take six years time, of course, depending on the, uh, the deficiency also, because all are genetic and the different, depending on the which type of enzymes are deficient or how much is deficient or absent. All those will change the phenotypic uh, progression of the disease. So, uh, if possible, then you go for the genetic, depending on the, I mean, affordability also, always go for the MRI, metabolic screening, and genetic, uh, okay. genetic, genetic, uh, genetic testing. So, did you, did, did you, uh, what, how would you plan your investigations in this child? So, six years of age, we know the presentation, we know the differential diagnosis, okay? So, Give us a list and list your investigations in such a way that you prioritize them. And as ma'am said, you have to look at the affordability, the feasibility of getting these investigations. You know, you may not have a neuroradiologist everywhere or a child neurologist everywhere or a geneticist everywhere or a genetic testing everywhere, right? So give us a list of, of how would you prioritize and every investigation which you say, just speak what is the importance which you think in this patient or what what information will it add to the uh, to our understanding in this patient uh, uh, mri brain okay so straight away go to the mri brain okay 
right so that's that's to look at structural phenotype the structural phenotype also uh, some of the congenital inform infections would show on mri brain and uh, so what are you looking at ross is speaking in your child what are you looking at number 1 is when you do an mri when you're looking at yes. the mri what so are the things you're looking at gray matter gray matter and white matter we are looking okay. at in mri so the structure of the brain the, the structure, structure of the brain, of the brain yes. right whether there are yes, there are any telltale evidence of any neuronal migration defect or maybe hematomas dysplasia yes. right so yes. whether yes. the myelination whether the, there is a, any myelination abnormalities or there is a dysmyelination to do more specifically or a demyelination right okay so you are or, have, uh, or absence of corpus callosum so structural abnormalities such as absence of corpus callosum okay nice so uh, what else what else are you looking at the mri can you increase the yield of the information which you get from the mri by adding some other uh, sequences or some other you know uh, uh, mri add addendums mr angio would help in diagnosing vascular part in this patient you didn't have a vascular etiology right it, no sir so i know anything know. else which may help you so in mscv or maybe in mitochondrial disease disorders of respiratory chain you add something which can add to your information point so mrs you heard about mrs mass spectroscopy yes okay so if you have a question which can be answered by an mrs spectroscopy so for example mitochondrial disorder of respiratory chain or msud you are looking for something or in some other organic acid you are looking for something uh, something specific in your mr imaging you can add a mrs spectroscopy right okay so in this patient to be worthwhile So, if you look at the structural imaging first, it required. If you have questions around, you can go for a MRI spectroscopy. Okay. So, what do you look? So, for example, if this child would have been uh, having a mitochondrial disorder of respiratory chain, where are you more likely to look at the abnormalities? I didn't consider it as one of the abnormalities, one of the etiologies. Why so? What is the commonest area which is involved in uh, in these patients? Uh, mitochondrial disorders or respiratory disorders? Which part of the brain? So, Lay's disease will involve cortex, deep cortex, deep gray matter, or the white matter? Which one? It's the gray. It's the deep gray. So the basal ganglia. So I, I didn't basal order ganglia. for an MR spectroscopy in this child, but I'll definitely be looking at the whether this is a uh, um, uh, uh, sulfide oxidase molecular cofactor deficiency where you may have severe damage to the uh, gray matter itself and the other etiologies. Okay. What else? What other investigations would you plan? We are almost done with the time, so let's finish it off. Let's wrap it off. Yes, sir. anything else so of course the 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 blood investigation see cbc you you looking for elevated transaminases if it's a mitochondrial involvement some other uh, diseases you, if it's uh, uh, if it's uh, sulfite oxidase molybdenum factor you look for uh, uric acid right and that gives us you a, a clue and so the blood investigations the routine biochemistry also helps you a lot in teasing apart uh, these patients right and then you can plan the advanced investigation so ma'am uh, yeah uh, as you rightly said first what we teach in our residents all to go for the first line of investigation when you are thinking any metabolic disorder so you are uh, having no clue what metabolic disorder and all you are suspecting some metabolic disorder as it rightly said that any depressed when we we can think of asphyxia or iem or uh, iem is a small molecule disorder not large molecules and third is the septicemia these three are the common dd in newborn no so always yes. uh, do the screen for the infections always 
where you have a not yes. and the metabolic is at a first line of investigation what we say go for the ph you have a, a the um, that abg a bbg do an pic i think you have, everyone is having now basically where you draw the blood and see the uh, abg and all there will be the lactic ph so it's very important to see the blood glucose lactate ph you can see a uh, first level of investigation then you, okay it is that is a pH is high or no acidemia is there or not? Then you send it the ammonia level because ammonia is very uh, tricky. You have to take it uh, from the arterial blood and send it immediately, and then no mixing. You know all those recipes are doing all. So it will be very tricky about the ammonia level and uh, send it and see the level. The second is the, then then you go for the um, second line of investigations. First line you see whether it is a the acidemia is there or not, hypoglycemia is there or not, or India is high or not, all those. Then you go for the second line, and you can go for the screening also, TMS screening and from blood, and you can go for the metabolic screening. Then you go for the other investigation because uh, we are in a resource poor country. We always think of rationality of the investigation. Don't write and all the investigation at time, and okay, they will diagnose. So it is a clinician will diagnose that it is not the pathologist in lab. So you have to uh, very much rationalize the investigation. Then, of course, if you think of uh, uh, the metagenetic study, then also you go for this. Sometimes, as we have missed the DD, uh, we, we also I don't have a time, I think, because and sometimes it's plastic diabetes, then we hear it's plastic diabetes. You know? So, here there's, uh, there's no involvement in, the, uh, in this case. Sometimes the uh, progression is so slow in here it is plastic and uh, spasticity, the progression is so, uh, so slow it may mimic the uh, non progressive type. And it's one of the commonest delay of CPP. There we can get the familial uh, history of other involvement of this or loss of the baby in the family. This to be very, uh, you have to be very broad and uh, wide open eyes when you get for the differential diagnosis. Then you see, because in CP, you know, uh, whenever they, anyone says to CP, go for the physiotherapy. That's all. No, you should not. always try to rule out others so that you can give back same benefit to the child. Then, of course, the, for investment as the function. Functional sport, locomotives and ambulations, excellence, how much delivery, what is the activity of delivery? This is very important. Always classify the activity as we are doing the ambulatory scaling by gross motor functional scoring. Similarly, do the activity of delivery. How far he is incapacitated? How far you have to give the management part? I think that to Manish now will go for the shift to the management part because time is running. So, in management, what is your aim? We should have some aim about the management. It, like in this session, we are uh, some, having some aim that we'll teach, we'll learn, we'll discuss this thing. So every, you know, when you're diagnosing a case, what is your aim? Aim is to make it physically, socially, educationally, more and, more. and vocationally independent. Huh? Every, yeah, everyone, even we want to be physically, socially, uh, educationally, and vocationally independent. So that what, maximum, whatever the possible, will give him socially, physically, educationally, and vocationally to make him independent. Not in this particular case because we see totally, as uh, uh, GST said, five uh, ambition scores of five, totally incapacitated and bed -driven. So it's not possible to give education or not. But in other cases and uh, any uh, disorders, they assure that you have to give the this four component. For that, you need a multidisciplinary approach. So, how do you approach for the management? Just uh, say in brief. I don't I think there's a few minutes, right? nine minutes, only nine minutes a bit. So, this brief, uh, how do you uh, approach for the As you said, uh, for physical, we could uh, uh, advise physiotherapy to the patient. Uh, so, uh, it, for... it, will, it will classify the management, but acute management. It needs immediate care. He has come with the convulsion. He has come with the seizure. So, so, we have yes. to manage the acute complications because that is a acute chronic complication. you have to take time. So, you always manage the acute complications, associated complications, and of course, the long-term complications. So you have to make a planning of the for the management, uh, take care of the acute complications, nutritional part, other deficiency part, and it said that rulings, difficulty in saliva, so the nutritional part is very important. Then of course, if there's a sensory integration, and, and it's too late to uh, say this uh, early stimulation, it should have been studied very early. So, but that on the physiotherapy of the, um, the possibilities. The most important thing but, here to remember is in all these patients, always remember, if you start intensive physiotherapy with this child, you say, start physiotherapy, start kardena. you know, you break, break the bones, right? Yes. Because they are very no, no, deficient no. in vitamin D. They have, very commonly, they have scurvy, okay? They are completely immobilized. So, the, the, as ma'am very rightly said, the first thing is, look at what is the patient came for epilepsy, for uh, recent onset of seizures. So, you, you manage the epilepsy. 
Okay. Then the second part is nutrition. So she and supplementation. The size on that, right? So build up the so so you you try to put in a nutritional plan, diet. Okay. Especially taking care of vitamin C, vitamin D, almost all micronutrient deficiency, anemia, right? Then once the child is stabilized, you know, started to. So increase weight, then you start intensive physical therapy. Otherwise, you know you land up with fractures, the more dislocation. Further, then constipation is always the big problem. Yes, yes. Progressive disorder. Then, how do you treat spasticity in this child? What drugs can you use? Uh, sir, for spasticity, we can use a drug like baclofen. Diazepam. Yeah, so you know we all go with the Western literature. So everybody is talking about Atropine, Zanidine. But remember, Diazepam is one of the best drugs to treat spasticity in this case. Very cheap. You know, it calms the baby child. It 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 it, 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 it works and will trigger spasticity. Trigger this thing. Okay. So that can be used. But you know, in your child. It's a flabby, very flabby child, right? Flabby muscles. The उसका nutrition ही नहीं है, तो muscles ही नहीं है. So always remember, पहले nutrition build up करना है, फिर आपको spasticity के लिए any other medication which you want to do. Right? Well, vitamin D deficiency in calcium deficiency can cause the flabby muscles. So that these things to be supplemented before you are going for the physical. Okay, so general principles and then continue to be on the workup. So you have to eventually give a diagnosis. She only had, this child only had one elder sister, and then uh, you know the, the family is planning more. Uh, then you need to have a definitive diagnosis. My take is I still don't agree. This is a static disorder. So I'm not seeing MRI. We'll we'll talk about the EMM uh, some day some day later. Okay. So thank you so much, and ma'am, you would like to summarize on how do we do and what? So I've been on this forum many many patients who pass. So uh, please, please let us let us have your value to you. To me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, it's a nice experience, and I I also learned many things. And uh, it's a nice presentation by Vimal. I'm quite confident, and you'll do better in your life, I think, and you'll do better in the next presentation also. You learn many things, and you have uh, answered many uh, things. And it's a learning session. And you know that initiates are lifelong learners. So don't think you have learned. We have also learned uh, many things. And uh, our revision was there. So it's a very nice uh, experience. And uh, that really, I really thank the Dr. Mani sir for highlighting these so minutely, taking each and every point so minutely, explaining the things. And it's very important for neurology. You know, neurology. I say neurology is like a mathematics. If you know the basics, algebra and the, all those and uh, arithmetic and the, everything is very clear. So, you will need neurology, neurology before going to the cases. You must go for the anatomy and blood supply. It's very important. A bit knowledge about them. That is very important. Thank you, Thank you uh, Dr. Parikh, Dr. Banis, and all other uh, experts and uh, well, there, Dr. Neha, Dr. Uh, and the, uh, the, Dr. Prashant, and uh, other doctors, uh, Deepak. No? I am thank and Dr. Sir, I think Dr. Baldev Sir is there or not? I uh, asked to him also. No. Ma'am, he tried to join uh, okay, three, okay. four times. No issue. There was no some issue. problem with the internet connection, so sir oh, called okay. me up. That uh, already both the experts are, they are really experts in the uh, subject. So sir said, uh, let them continue. And we are really very much thankful, ma'am. The today's session was really a great learning experience. As you rightly said, we learn every time, even though at these many years also. Yes. The child are the children are presenting, but uh, as a teacher, we also learn many other things. Thank you so much, Mani sir and uh, Kalpana ma'am for being here uh, with us. This was our EOPG restarted as a e-guru school restarted, and uh, for this restarting first session, we are really thankful to both of our experts. Thank you, thank ma'am. You so and much, also sir. thankful I, I... to the. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Eight minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all very grateful. My thanks to Dr. Parikh. Yes, he made me. It was a great, you know, it's it's a great initiative. Great, great initiative. So, man, I I always refer my students to the Cyan Hospital rounds. Uh, so, the great Dr. Ambedkar and uh, 
Uh, yeah. Yes. So, uh, first of all, congratulation to Dr. Vimal and uh, mentor, best mentorship, Dr. Deepa, Madam, and both the esteemed Dr. The Kalpana, Madam, and Manish Bhai. You are always with us <laughs> in last year also, and our main uh, moderator and convener, Dr. Valdev Prajapati, sir, we missed uh, today due to the technical problem, but. Uh, Sir's expert comment, and last year we had uh, Dr. Vaike Amdekar sir, Dr. Srinivasan sir from Jitmaya, Dr. Balakibram, Bala, Dr. Subaram, and many, many esteemed faculty across the country and the outside also. So we are thankful to all the esteemed faculty who made our program uh, more popular and successful. And uh, today's session well conducted by Dr. Nehal Madam and Dr. Pashan. And thanks to Dr. Rakesh by our AOP Gujarat President. He uh, has trusted us and restarted the program. So thank you very much, Deepa Ben and Vimal, uh, Manish Bhai, uh, you, Madam, and Nehal Ben, uh, Prashant and all. And all the viewers on the uh, viewers link and the clarinet also for this, the technical support. I, I wanted to say one word. I know uh, when I was a kid, we have lots of Gujarati friends. No? So I know a bit of Gujarati. I want to say one sentence in Gujarati. One of my yeah. friends was the Madhu. And her younger daughter used to fight with the Madhu. And he, she always to complain, Ba jo ne Madhu ben maro che. <laughs> <laughs> जोधपुर ओके थैंक यू मैडम थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू प्रशांत ऑल्सो थैंक यू मैडम एंड थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच बाय 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 ओके योगेश भाई गुड नाइट ऑल गुड नाइट मैम प्रशांत थैंक यू जमीना वी कैन एंड द लाइव नाउ थैंक यू प्रशांत हाँ नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट मैडम प्रशांत क्या हो चुका नेक्स्ट टू प्लांट्स आ देवली ना लाइव बंद करें इतने करिए सर नहीं करिए आज बंद ना क्यों खाओ बड़े आउट से नोटिफिकेशन आउट ऊपर लगे रहो जब कस्टम लाइव कस्टम लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग लाइव ओके हम्म लाइव छे बराबर छे 
ઠીક છે તો મેડમ ફોન માં વાત કરશું ફોન નથી ઉપાડતા એટલે હવે આપણે લિંક થઈ જઈએ આપણે પછી ફોન માં વાત કરી લઈશું યા ફોન માં થેન્ક યુ ઓકે થેન્ક યુ